What do you do when it's late at night, you need a video ready for the morning, and you have been trying to watercolor your favorite photo reference all day long and it just won't work? What do you do? You have to get something done. You get out a different medium. This video is dedicated to all of those who think I walk on water because I see your comments. Is there nothing you can't draw or paint? Yes, and this photo is it. <laughs> I have had this photo in my little photo album that where I collect things at Paint My Photo. I've had it there for years and I try painting it every year. And this year was no different. I failed at it again. I was just not able to paint it. I tried all day on Monday. I was painting all morning and could not, for the life of me, get anything going. I could paint the leaf. I could paint the, the cones, whatever they are, and I could paint the background, but I couldn't do all three in one painting. There's always something that completely screwed up. And I started feeling terrible about myself. Because there's nothing like wanting desperately to get something to work and having it not work. That happens to all of us. And sometimes it's that the subject matter is just too hard. And I think given that I've tried this for years, that's possible. I also need to work on some techniques that I, I think now I have a better idea what I want to do. So I'm probably going to try it again. I'm going to get back on the horse. But by 4.30 in the afternoon, I had decided instead of trying to watercolor it again, I was going to create this in pastels. And this pastel study has actually taught me some things that I want to try in watercolor because I worked out some of the color issues that I was having when I was painting. And I'm not sure how I'll create them in watercolor, but at least I know what I want to create. So if you're frustrated, if you hit the wall with something that you're trying to paint, you're trying to draw in whatever the medium is, it's okay to say, you know, this one's just tough right now. It's kicking my butt and I'm going to move on. You can either move on to a different subject matter in the same medium, if that's, if you're a one medium person, or it just switch to a different medium like I did. It's no, no failure to just be able to say, yep, I didn't do that one well, and I'm going to go back and try it again another time, but it's not working for today. Now, for me, some days just aren't watercolor days because no matter what I do, I, you know, I can't make my brush do what I want it to. And maybe I've just been doing pastel for the last month and <laughs> my, my hand forgot how to paint. Although I did a, a watercolor sketch in my last video, so that's probably not completely true, but it's always hard to say what it is that makes you have a good day or a bad day with your medium. But in any case, it doesn't mean you're not an artist if you have a bad one. Now, I have to say, when I had that many failures with the watercolor, I started having my, my doubts about myself. But this drawing in pastel really brought me back to, okay, I can do this. I, I can handle this. Because, you know, just you get those little, that little doubt in your mind and you have to somehow figure out how to deal with it. And for me, it's just getting back on that horse. I know a lot of people will say, if you, you're having a hard day, just go for a walk, you know, get out of the studio. For me, that doesn't work because what I end up with is carrying that feeling of being a failure as an artist into whatever else it is that I'm doing. And I find it really hard to get back into the studio the next time because I'm worried that that's going to happen again. It's a lot better for me to just switch mediums, sometimes switch the whole subject matter, but do something else, make something else so I can prove to my brain that it was just that one thing. I'm still an artist. And sometimes we have to play games with our brains so if you're that kind of person, don't feel bad if you have to do a little something to try to get your head wrapped around the fact that you're still an artist. Even after a bad day, you're still an artist. Now, 
you might be surprised that I'm using pastels here because I don't really have pastels much on this channel. I think I have one other pastel video, maybe two. But I have been working with pastels for the last month or so in anticipation of taking some commissions in December. I've talked about that before, and today was going to be the day that I was going to start accepting applications for commissions. I was very excited. I have a bunch of samples done. I can't wait to show them to you. But I had a little tech issue that came up this morning. It was crazy. I woke up and I had like 400 emails from my website. There was uh, like one of those robots, internet robots that found the form. It's on a hidden page, but it found it and filled out the form 400 times with gibberish in it. Now, there's no way it can hack into my system or anything. It just like pounded that page and kept filling out the form. And I changed the CAPTCHA to something else. Um, there's all different types of CAPTCHA. So I changed it. And like six hours later, it came back and did it again. So I changed the CAPTCHA again to a different kind, trying to outwit this thing. And so far, it seems to be working. But I decided I didn't want to launch the form and you know, the application for commissions until I was sure that that was settled because then I'll have 400 emails from it and then like two emails from uh, clients and that would be weird. So I'm going to, you know, try on Saturday instead to talk more about the commissions. But if you have questions about commissions, you can leave them in the comments on this one. I will tell you a few things because uh, I've had a few places I've posted about the commissions and I've had some questions, one of which was why am I doing pastel commissions and not like watercolor or Copic markers or something. And there's very good reasons. One, Copic markers are not light fast and I'm not going to sell you a piece of artwork for a commission price that's going to fade. And if you ever try to sell something like that, you have to let the the client know because, you know, it's not fair if you, you charge them a lot of money for your drawing and then it disappears on their wall. So there's that. Um, and then I also wanted to do it in pastels because I can work fairly quickly in pastels. I mean, this drawing took me maybe five hours or something like that. And I've been practicing pet portraits and, you know, those are taking, you know, five or six hours, whatever, I, I guess, depending on what size, different ones take different amounts of time. But if I were to try, you know, a pencil drawing, a color pencil drawing, it would take way longer than that. I can cover more real estate with the pastel more quickly, especially when we're talking backgrounds and everything and, um, you know, doing fur and that kind of stuff. The blending is faster with pastels. Plus, these are all mom's pastels from the 50s. She sent me the ones that you see here on camera a long time ago, and I've used them some, but they kind of arrived in tiny pieces. As you can see, they're really small. And those tiny pieces are okay to work with, but now I have the rest of her pastels as well. So if one of these colors runs out, I have more selection I can choose from because when I went home, in September, she gave me the entire case of them because she's decided at her age, she's not going to be taking up pastels anymore. So I want to use hers and I want to make a lot of art with them um, sooner rather than later, because I want to share with her what I'm making. And I want her to know that her, her art supplies are getting good use. And I don't know how long she'll be with me. So I want to, you know, do a whole bunch of stuff uh, in the near future. So that's another reason for doing pastels. And then there's also the, the, uh, the watercolor issue. There's some things I can't paint. <laughs> so I'm more trustworthy with something like pastel in knowing that, yes, I can draw a leaf and I may not be able to have the watercolor techniques that I want to achieve this, but I, you know, I can do this in pastels and I, I can do animals really well in pastels. I can't wait to share those uh, drawings with you. I've shared a couple of them over on threads. If you're on threads, you can scroll through my page and see a few of them. 
But yeah, so that'll hopefully be this weekend because I do want to get that going and figure out if anybody actually wants any commissions from me. I've had a few uh, requests for them and have been telling people just wait till December and hopefully they'll see the video when it comes out and find out that yes, it's now available. So there's a number of things too that I want to learn with pastels while I'm doing the commissions. And it's not that I'm, you know, going to give you a bad drawing because I'm learning. But for instance, this drawing, I was experimenting with, is it better to do the leaf and the cones and the stick and everything and then do the background or do the background first and then add those things on top? You know, there's different ways to approach stuff. And here I decided to do, you know, just try one doing the background later. And I should have done the twig at the end. I should have just done the twig on top because that would have been easy to do on top of everything. And yet here I was trying really hard to work around it. I eventually gave up on that. And instead I just colored right over top of the twig and redrew the twig so that I could get the blending to go correctly from one side of the stick to the other, instead of having it look like there was a color break between them. But, you know, just learning different technique things that I just need to practice. And if I'm doing a bunch of commissions, that will be an excellent time to, you know, try one with a certain order and another with a certain order. I've also had some people asking while I've been posting those things, am I ever going to do classes in pastels? And I just want you to look at those boxes and see, am I going to ever be able to tell you what color any of those are? No. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way like all of mom's pastels have no labels on there's like three that have a sennelier label on them and then everything else is little chunks little pieces so I don't even know what colors I'm using I there's sometimes I grab one that it looks like it's a black and no that was a green so I end up with like strange colors on things most colors in pastels look like the color that the stick itself is but some of the dark ones it's a little hard to tell in between you know, dark blues and dark greens. So you got to test those out a bit, but I would not be able to tell you any colors that I'm using or like, what is a good brand? I have no idea. I have no idea what brands any of these are. So once I use up moms and start working on the Richeson set that I bought, at least I'll know whether the Richeson are good ones. I did buy some black and white Sennelier's just so I have some extra black and white around here and they like crumble really quickly. So I'm not sure I'm a fan of those, but I don't know whether a bunch of these are Sennelier's, but they just are smaller pieces. So they didn't, they don't get as crumbly. I, I have no idea. Nonetheless, someday I might have more information to be able to share in either tutorials or <laughs> classes, but it's going to be a while because I'd have to like get through using up all these pastels that my mom gave me and I want to use them because they're they're wonderful and she bought really good quality stuff which was great but I do hope that this video helps to convince you if you find yourself like having a bad day in the studio and your watercolor isn't working or your alcohol markers or whatever it is that you're using isn't working I highly recommend either moving to a different subject matter and just getting back on that horse or move to a different medium. Because I was feeling better once I was working on this drawing because I proved to my brain that I am not a failure as an artist because I'm telling you when I keep painting something over and over and over again and they keep ending up in the recycle bin, I can start really feeling down on myself and feeling like, you know, I've got imposter syndrome. And I don't want you to feel that. I want you to be excited about the next time you get back in the studio. And if you leave the studio with that bad feeling, it might be hard to go back in next time. I took the tape off and finished the background out to the edges of the paper so I wouldn't have a big black border when matting it. And you see mom's lovely drawers of pastels and my finished drawing. So yay for getting this done. I felt so much better as an artist having completed something. So I am a big fan of never leaving the studio feeling like a hot mess, even if you just get out a pencil and do a quick sketch. 
Now, this is a watercolor that I did. If you're wondering, is Sandy any good at watercolor? Is that why she's switching to pastels? Yes, I can watercolor. So you can watch this one. It's a real-time video, very chill, very relaxed. And I will put a link on the screen in just a second. So you can go tap to see that one. You can also go see playlists on my channel. I have like 13, 1400 videos, plenty to entertain you and help you to increase your art skills. Thank you so much for joining me. Hit that like button and give it a big thing, thumbs up. Helps the channel out. I create something every day. I'll see you again soon.